Lucas Media. So we got some news coming out, and that is Bishop Lamar Whitehead, who they called the Bling Pastor. You know the one who was he from New York, and he got that he had a huge closet in his house with all those designer clothes, and you know he got robbed. As a matter of fact, for his jewelry online, allegedly. Well, you know he got hit with nine years in federal prison for. First of all, he a, a, a parishioner. A parishioner, he convinced a parishioner to give him ninety thousand dollars in savings, promising to help her buy a home. And he instead spent the goods for himself. You know, jewelry, cars, all that good stuff. He was also accused of trying to defraud, to defraud and extort, extort a businessman of lying to FBI agents. And. Uh, you know, U.S. Attorney Damian Williams said Lamar Whitehead is a con man who stole millions of dollars in a string of financial frauds and even stole from one of his own parishioners. He lied to federal agents and again to the courts at his trial. Today's sentence put an end to Whitehead various schemes and reflects on the office commitment to bring accountability to those who abuse positions of trust. And here's my thing to the federal, the federal government. Good. Lock them up. Nine years, honestly, isn't long enough. I'm so sick and tired of these people that are, that have all this, you know, this power. And then they just, they take advantage of, of the the people who don't know. You know, here this person giving $90,000 of their hard earned money. You know how long it take up to save 90 G's? 90,000. And for this clown, this dumb ninja, y'all really, I really want to go in, but I can't do it on this platform. To take that money and go buy Gucci shoes and Louis shoes and Rolls Royces and you got all this jewelry on, but you're a fraud. And this, honestly, this is why you don't see a lot of us in church no more because it is almost, I don't care. Everybody got a story of something that didn't happen with one of these pastors. They didn't scam somebody. They didn't have a baby with somebody a mistress, somebody that got caught up or some type of cult-like following from a lot of these, these churches, man, these black churches that we all go to. And it wasn't like that growing up. It wasn't like that in the 60s and 70s and 50s. You know, the church used to be the center of black community. This is why they had all these bombings back in the day in Birmingham to where they did it. It was Birmingham because everybody went to church. You know, you could learn in church, all that. But now the church has pretty much turned into a sideshow. You got people like this bootleg pastor right here. You know, he, he preaching the word, but he taking out your pockets. And then you'll still have his neighbor say, uh, he's not perfect. Nobody's perfect. I mean, listen, man, I don't care how perfect or imperfect you are. You still 90, 90 grand from me and I'm supposed to get a house and you out there trying to buy Louis to show online. So good. I mean, listen. The federal judge, honestly, they gave him a slap on the wrist. He was facing multiple decades, you know, so he can get out and, you know, and say he changed his life. Or last time I saw this clown was talking about how, you know, it was conspiracy out against him. And I, listen, I don't feel sorry for none of these clowns. None. None of them. You know, and, it, and it's a lot of them. It's a couple down here in Atlanta, too. It's a couple down here that, you know, I ain't going to say their names right now. But y'all y'all go to these mega churches, man. It ain't nothing. But anarchy, you know, you got you got people in there. <laughs> I got so many different church stories, man. I might have to start. I might have to start our own playlist with just church stories. I know a guy right now, right now, who is a pastor. You know, not at a mega church, but he a pastor. But yet this dude is creeping. He preaching the word while on, on the set at the same time. He trying to talk to your wife. You know what I'm saying? He trying to talk to your sister. He trying to talk to your niece. In some instances, he tried to talk to your nephew. So I mean, listen, I can keep going on and on, but listen, man, I don't feel I don't feel bad for this dude or none, none of these clowns, man. But I just want to get my quick thoughts about it. Hey, he'll be all right. He'll sit down. You gotta do what? 80, 85% of and when you do federal time. So he'll be all right. Nine years, honestly, like I said, they could have gave him 30, honestly. So he'll be all right. But I just want to get my quick thoughts about it and tell me what y'all think.